It's all about flying a person into space, having the most incredible, inspirational flight for one person that you can ever imagine. When? <laughs> when we have rockets flying. <laughs> I'm working my part, I assure you. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yes, I really hope you retain this one on the new bush. Drawing and sketching and music has always been a part of my, my life. Um, but I decided to uh, to study architecture, so I became a, an ed educated architect from the School of Architecture in, in Copenhagen. I studied uh, space science, knowing that it might bring me someplace interesting like NASA, which it did. I see myself as, an, as a designer and an artist. I'm a maker of extreme machines, I'd say. I am... A Originally edu educated a little bit as an engineer, a little bit as a, a naval engineer, a marine engineer. I discovered that with the skills I had gained, I could build a submarine. Building a midget submarine was something I could do literally in my own workshop and design it myself from scratch. The last one being the world's largest, uh, 80 meters, as my last submarine, the Nautilus. We met in his, uh, one of his uh, submarines he had built. And uh, we, I guess within an hour, we decided to do this. It was pretty fast that this project was next, the next step. That was the beginning of a wonderful friendship. We're going to build a large rocket booster and it's a single-stage rocket that's capable of hurtling its 500-kilo spacecraft payload into suborbital space. We lift off and fly on a trajectory that takes us out of Earth's atmosphere. And when we're there, being weightless, then we separate the booster and we free-fly the capsule in space. We have about five minutes of time in outer space and then the capsule automatically drops back into the atmosphere, deploys a small parachute and then three big parachutes and lands on board. That rocket Heat 1X was launched in 2011. What you see is actually a 10 meter long and two ton hand built space rocket and on top of that rocket you have a man-sized 80 kilogram dummy sitting in a seat. It was a fantastic experience and I think a major milestone for a project like this. But for us it was a tremendous success, first of all because we had liftoff, but also because as the first in the world we were capable as amateurs to remotely shutting down a huge rocket engine by radio command. The dummy, he uh, broke his neck and he drowned, but uh, you, ha you have to start somewhere. Uh, in his second flight he only broke his leg, so uh, you know, it's uh, we're going the right direction. We have one test of a component for the rocket known as the steam generator. It produces energy that drives the propellant pumps. It's all components that add up to become the launch vehicle. And one has to understand that the only way to develop anything like this is to, to 
to cut it up into bits and pieces, a steam generator, a turbine pump, a rocket engine, a propellant tank, a pressure regulator, and so on. And that's how we work. We cut it down to small projects that are manageable. And ultimately, when all the small projects have been accomplished, we'll be able to put it back together and make a very complicated, very big rocket function. There's a lot of differences between Copenhagen Suborbitals and, and NASA. Of course, there's a budget difference. I say we have a annual budget which is equivalent to the coffee budget at NASA. We have about 500,000 euros per year. It's not about getting rich. Money is actually just a tool. So that's why we didn't create some kind of commercial enterprise about it. My cooking here, what is used in cat's toilet, it's like a kind of pimp stone, and it then absorbs a, a material known as potassium permanganate, which is the catalyzer. This is the steam plant of the rocket. It produces 100, that's 15, 1,500 kilos of steam per hour at very high pressure and very high temperature. So it's really the boiler of the turbine, of the propellant pump, of the rocket to send the main into space. If we can have this much fun, why shouldn't we share it to a lot of people so they can contribute we found out that crowdfunding is the, the best way to, to fund a project like this. Through the internet, we can find the financial means using crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter. We have 5,000 people donating to the project. What we have here is essentially a steam engine. This is the boiler. It produces the steam. Within this tank, we have tea stuff hydrogen peroxide 80%. It goes through a control valve into a reaction chamber and becomes steam that's ejected here. The test is to try the boiler and see if we can make steam enough. Nobody gets any finances for this project. Uh, personally, Peter and I, we're living from doing lectures and speeches. There's about 45 people directly attached to Copenhagen Suborbitals who, um, who come here almost every day. There's a cycle, 24 hours a day. Nobody here earns any money from doing this. And I think as long as the, the, the project is interesting enough and it's fun to be here and there's a challenge every day, you don't need the money. It's not important for people to earn money. Well, I, I love being here because uh, it's a childish vision that's just impossible to do and still all these people got, got together and decided to do it anyway. And uh, I love it because you've got a big machine and even a little girl with small arms like me can, uh, uh, can mend uh, iron like this. I can make exactly what I want to make uh, because I've got this. <laughs> For the test, everything turned white uh, because of a night storm of snow. The temperature is very low. It was low yesterday, but it was a blue sky. So it's probably going to give us a very bad day with uh, not the right feeling around such a test. But um, those are the conditions. And rather than giving up and saying, hey, we'll wait till tomorrow, we'll just do this to get some initial numbers on the steam generator 
generator so that we can see if we're making enough steam. And that'll be the uh, object of today's test. Test day, I'll sit on a rock crying because it's so hard to organize people and to make it all work. And there's so much you have to think about, and you can be Five, very, very alone in it. Four, three, two, one, zero. I'm reading now the pressure drop across the cat pack is small, so I can extend that without losing too much pressure. And the short and long in it is that it works. The engine smelled good. Um, so all in all, the only accident today was me uh, trying to use a pen having a <laughs> collar all over my hand. But other than that, it basically worked. I think it's very important that you give yourself a challenge which is so difficult that you almost believe that it cannot be done, but you know that you can do it. Because you develop as a person and as a group and a society if you give yourself those very difficult tasks. On that great day, everybody on the team says goodbye. We don't know if he's coming back in one piece. We don't know what's going to happen next. Am I going to live through this? Plainly putting it, we live and you're going to die anyway and there's no way around it. Why not get the best out of life? And that's how I think of it. <laughs>